Like father, like son. But only sometimes. A lot of our favorite sitcom stars were also real dads, and we want to see how far the apple fell from the tree. So join us as we take a look at our favorite 1970s sitcom dads and see what their real life sons are up to now. I'm your host Nostalgic Nick with Do You Remember, and we really had a ton of fun putting this one together. But now, without further ado, let's see who's all in the family. Carol O'Connor and Hugh O'Connor. Well, I hate a smart alley kid and I don't care what color he is. We all know Carol O'Connor as Archie Bunker, but do you recognize his son? Check out Carol at the start of his military career on the left and his son Hugh on the right, looking like they could be brothers. Or, I mean, do they? Well, guess what? As I now know, Hugh was adopted. He was adopted when he was six years old while dad was filming Cleopatra in Rome. Now, Hugh didn't have his dad's military career, but he did fight his own battle at 16 with Hodgkin's lymphoma. The chemo did the trick, but the painkillers he took led to serious drug addiction. Now, dad also had a smoking addiction, but while Carol dropped the habit at age 30, Hugh's struggles would last the rest of his life. Hugh managed to gain some acclaim thanks to his performance as James Flynn in 1984's Brass, and he kept that momentum going as Lonnie Jameson in The Heat of the Night, of course, alongside Dad. Hugh began his 30s as a married man, and then a father. But horribly, Carol never got to see where his son's career might have taken him next. Because on March 28, 1995, Hugh called his dad and told him he wanted to end it all. He wanted to take his own life. He believed he'd never beat this addiction. Carol called the cops and pleaded with them to rush over to Hugh. They did, but officers arrived just as Hugh O'Connor shot himself. He was just 32 years old. Lauren Green and Charles Green. The same angular face, same dark hair and mouth shape. Yeah, I'd say if you spotted Lauren Green in 1942 beside his son in his mid-30s, you might even think they were twins, even if their careers were nothing alike. If ever there was a man who always seemed ready to take charge, it was Lauren Green. From the steadfast Cartwright patriarch to the spiritual commander Adama. While Charles, nicknamed Chuck, definitely had that Cartwright ability to rough it and fell head over heels in love with hiking. In fact, after a trek through the absolutely stunning Arrowin Pines, he decided he wanted to blaze trails for a living. Can we show a bit of Arrowin Pines here? It's so beautiful and I oh so badly want to visit. Now, some of Dad's influence came through when Chuck helped create and produce Lauren Green's New Wilderness. After he planted roots around Lake Tahoe, Chuck fronted groups dedicated to preserving the local natural landscape. Maybe he didn't star in front of the camera, but he used that same charisma to lead the fight for Mother Earth. Now for a bit of sad news, we all know Lauren Green passed, but Chuck also just recently passed on May 29th, 2024. Chuck died from a terminal disease after deciding to forego further treatment, just a few months shy of turning 80 years old. John Ritter and Jason Ritter. The Ritter men love that side sweep hairstyle and whatever formula is going on between John and Jason to make them look like mirror images of each other. I don't know. And just for fun, here's a young Tex Ritter too. Wrong hairstyle, but the looks are strong with this one. Now Jason actually made his on-screen debut on Three's Company when he was just a toddler. After that, there was something for everyone, from the cartoon Gravity Falls to a four-year stint on NBC's Parenthood, which actually netted him a primetime Emmy nomination for Outstanding Guest Actor. Yeah, not a bad milestone to reach in his 30s. Around the same time, John was just beginning Three's Company. For over a decade, he had a thing with Scottish actor, producer, writer, all-around Renaissance woman Mariana Palka, but they split in 2023. But then Jason found true love, I guess, and tied the knot with fellow actor Melanie Linsky. If you don't know Melanie, she has a great resume herself. In fact, one of her most recent high profile gigs was The Last of Us, which also allowed Jason to make a cameo as one of the zombies in the same episode when her own character, um, well, you know what, I won't spoil it. So Jason kind of publicly battled alcoholism over the years, and he says it's left him feeling unworthy of Melanie, who'd called their relationship, quote, 
messy and interesting and weird. But hell, they're making it work, and Jason credits Melanie with his sobriety. Anywho, Jason Ritter, we love you, we loved your dad, hell, we love your wife, so continue making great work. Ron Howard and Reed Howard It didn't get much more wholesome than the stuff Ron Howard was in during the 1970s as the kids so many parents wanted their sons to take after. And don't forget guys, comb your hair because they're taking pictures for the yearbook. Sorry mom, I like dirt bikes and firecrackers. Anyway, just one look at that Richie red hair and it's easy to see a resemblance between Ron and Reed. But you know what, I'll be honest, it kinda ends at that hair. Nose, eye shape, even teeth are pretty different. And so were their careers. Instead of acting, Reed caught the golfing bug. Instead of a studio, he's chosen social media as his stage, where he posts golf-related content to Instagram and YouTube. Hell, who wouldn't want to learn some golfing tips from Richie Cunningham's son? Hey, that's great and all, but you know what? When Howard was around his son's age, he was giving the world Apollo 13. Houston, we have a problem. And we're not going to talk about that movie anymore because I really don't want to start crying in the middle of a deep dive. Michael Landon and Chris, Michael Jr., Josh, and Sean. So I think Chris Landon definitely inherited his dad's magazine-worthy smile and wavy brown locks. The sharp nose and sharper cheekbones are definitely a match. But Chris's face might be a bit longer. What do you think? Someone get that man a cowboy hat stat. You know, I'm a dad. I have kids. If you don't know, America's pa didn't live quite the squeaky clean life as Charles Ingalls out by Walnut Grove, and we do many deep dives into that great show, so watch those next. We explain his many marriages and his many affairs. Chris went into the acting world just like dad and brother, though this area of expertise leans way more towards horror. Like we have a ghost, freaky, and the cheerfully named Happy Death Day to you. Michael Jr. really took his namesake to heart, and just like Dad, he worked on all areas of production. I think highlighted by 1999's made-for-TV film Michael Landon, The Father I Knew. By that point, Landon Sr. had been dead for nearly a decade, and Jr. wanted to show all the struggles his dad faced in life, and the reconciliation they managed. We can also see his hand in 2007's The Velveteen Rabbit, plus When Calls the Heart over on Hallmark, and the recent follow-up When Hope Calls. Together with his wife Cherie Gregory, they have three children. Michael Jr. may share dad's name, but I think mostly he just got wavy hair from him. Some photos I think he even looks more like Ron Howard or Owen Wilson mixed together. But in terms of work, Junior took his namesake to heart. Pretty much all the photos of Josh are baby photos, but this photogenic baby definitely learned from Pa how to win over the camera. And once again, the bit of resemblance we see is pretty remarkable because Josh was adopted as an infant. Pretty much all things Josh are scarce. The guy really favored his privacy, and honestly, good on him. But we do know Landon was pretty protective of their relationship, especially in the face of all the stigma that adoption can carry. Landon did a famous interview with People in 1962, where he made it crystal clear they were no less than father and son. Now, Sean. He was just a toddler when Michael died, so he never really got to know his legendary TV dad. Completely carving out a different path than both his parents, Sean, along with his big sis Shauna, works as a realtor. I think the main way his dad influenced his work was the family's proximity to Tinseltown. In fact, Sean's bio on the Douglas Elliman Real Estate website tells us, quote, Sean Landon was born and raised in Malibu with deep familial ties to the special beachside community. Burt Reynolds and Quentin Reynolds. Okay, so any resemblance here is a coincidence, as he too was adopted during the time that Burt was famously married to the radiant Lonnie Anderson. And one thing we have to talk about here is back in 2011, just a few years before Burt died, he made it very clear in a big legal decision, keeping Quentin out of his will. But hold on just a second, it's not as bad as it might sound. His will actually outlines, and I quote, I intentionally omit him from this, my last will and testament, as I have provided for him during my lifetime in my declaration of trust. So yeah, it does seem there are some familial bonds between this broken up trio. Because after Reynolds died in 2018, Anderson said for her and her son, quote, Quentin and I are extremely touched by the tremendous outpouring of love and support from friends and family throughout the world. 
She also gave us a bit of insight, saying, quote, He was a big part of my life for 12 years and Quentin's father for 30 years. We will miss him and his great laugh. Now, Quentin did not choose the spotlight like Dad, but he did get his fair number of acting credits. Beginning with 2013's Escape from Polygamy, leading to 2023's Wait For It. But he's probably most well known for Ouija, Origin of Evil in 2016 and Tales of Halloween in 2015. Fred McMurray and Robert McMurray. Don't let his role in My Three Sons fool ya. Fred McMurray had four kids, only one of them a son. That's right, Fred's family story could have been called My Three Daughters. His only son was one of two adoptions he and his beloved first wife Lillian Lamont pursued. Allegedly because Lamont was in poor health and they wanted to become parents ASAP. Despite this meaningful gesture, Fred and Robert drifted apart over the course of Robert's life. Because as Fred words it, Robert chose, quote, the hippie route via the South Seas to find himself. Henry Winkler and Max Winkler. Hey, the Fonz settled down after all. Who'd have guessed it? Because there's no mistaking that narrow face, even the mouth and eye shape. Boy, they do look alike. The world got to meet Max in 1993, thanks to his first acting gig, Cop and a Half. I'm history. No, it wasn't anything big. But hey, you gotta start somewhere. Not everyone can start as the Fonz. Who you got to say to the people of the 21st century, huh? Eee. Max kept the tradition of breaking the mold just a bit because he got into directing in 2006. Yeah, 10 episodes of Clark and Michael. Add in some topical sitcoms like the pretty funny Fresh Off the Boat and the absolutely hilarious Brooklyn Nine-Nine. That's what Max kind of does. He's a really good TV director. In 2024, he directed Feud, Capote vs. The Swans. Dick Van Dyke and Barry and Christian. You know what? I'm not sure I would have guessed Dick and Barry were related. If I'm being honest, the nose are pretty different. Same with the brow. But I definitely see it in the jawline. And it seems Dick Van Dyke is better at parenting than he is at Cockney accents, cause he's a dad of four. While Pop stuck to just acting, Barry diversified his portfolio with writing and directing to boot. He started acting in the 1960s and got some pretty beloved credits in like Wonder Woman, Mork and Mindy, The Love Boat, and boy did he fill up his schedule, most recently credited in 2019's The Untold Story. And Barry also became a dad, like, well, his dad. One of his kids is Shane Van Dyke, who works as, you guessed it, an actor, a director, and a screenwriter. You gotta love nepotism. As for Christian, the white hair helps a million times picking out the Van Dyke resemblance. But his face is also way narrower and longer than Dad's, but he does have Pop's nose. He got his first gig on Dad's show, The Dick Van Dyke Show, as a rather musical youngster named Frankie. Ma, the rap, ma, ma, no. Then in 1974, Christian became a dad with his then wife, Caroline Heller, to a baby girl named Jessica. But tragedy struck the small family when Jessica died at just 13 years old. According to the Associated Press, poor little Jessica caught chickenpox and then suffered complications from Rye syndrome which leads to brain and liver swelling. Honestly, it's a parent's worst nightmare. Christian had two more kids and also kinda had to play parent to his papa. When he spoke out about Dick Van Dyke getting married to the much younger Arlene, but when he saw his dad and his new stepmom exchanging vows, Christian did say it was a blessing. Larry Hagman and Preston Hagman. Preston Hagman wore his hair long and free so it's a bit hard to see Larry with that style. But the resemblance is still a bit hard years later. Preston's face just looks a bit longer and rounder to me. What do you think? There's only room for one king of the hill around here, Catherine. Saddle up with the evil J.R. Ewing, the subject of TV's biggest and best cliffhanger. Thankfully, Preston was less Ewing and more Major Nelson. And like father like son, Preston got a Dallas credit too. 1978, he was around 17. Definitely a step up from Larry at that time, who spent much of his youth bouncing between houses while his mom lived her Broadway dream. Larry Hagman passed away in 2012, and Preston's also been keeping things rather quiet, so we wish him well. 
Dick York, Chris, and Matthew. So I gotta say, from the bits of footage with Chris and Matthew York, their dad has some unique features. I just don't see it in any of his kids. It's something in his face you just don't see anywhere else. But hey, they're still one heck of a family. Dick Yorks was a star we really hated seeing go out after one injury snowballed into a career-ending trauma. Through all the turbulent pain was his wife Joan, whom he married in 1951. If you want a hint at how much he treasured their relationship, check out his memoir of the Seesaw Girl and Me. It's a loving and reverential reference to Joan herself, his anchor. It looks like Chris and Matthew didn't go for acting, at least not outright, but they kept one foot in the limelight in the name of honoring their pops. We know this thanks to recordings like these shared by writer David L. Pierce, author of the magical The Bewitched History book. It's an incredible book, we'll put a link in the description, so hey, check it out yourself. Tony Randall and Jefferson Randall Appearance-wise, Tony Randall and his son Jefferson kind of look like strangers. Way different hair, different nose, forehead. Jefferson looks like he could be in a band, and Tony is like if Elvis were 007. No, nobody else seeing my vision here. After Tony's high school sweetheart died to cancer, Tony married Heather Harlan, who was 25 when they wed. Randall was, whoo, golly, okay, maybe sit down for this one, was 75. And they went on to have Jefferson Salvini, named after American comedian Joseph Jefferson and Italian thespian Tommaso Salvini. Keeping with his artsy name scheme over on Instagram, Randall has several hundreds of followers. Mostly he just posts candid pics, but he really unleashed his artistic side through writing. He contributed to the lit mag called The Perch, Volume 7, released in spring 2024. His submission is a work of fiction called Shoot the Freak. When he's not promoting his writing, he is promoting his music. Oh, he is in a band. They're called The Rosenbergs, who just released their debut EP, Sold Out for This. So hey, what are you doing today? You're gonna check out Tony Randall's son's band. Hey, who knew? Dan Blocker, Dirk, and David. Now finally, a family resemblance that's as strong as a mountain man. Dirk has Dan's same larger-than-life presence nearly one-to-one. -one. Dirk got his acting start sooner than Dad, whose career took off in his late 20s. And Dirk was maybe seven-ish when he appeared alongside his dad in a 1964 car commercial. What's your brand on one up? But once the ball started rolling, the momentum fueled itself. Just name a classic, he's been in it. MASH, Little House, Beverly Hills 90210, Matlock, Quantum Leap, Chips. Dirk's most known for a previously mentioned Brooklyn Nine-Nine TV show. Yeah, I'd love to chat, but I can't. Hitchcock and I are eating cake for dinner and watching the movie. Ask Amy if she wants to come over. Dirk plays the hapless cop Hitchcock, and he's freaking hysterical. He is certainly Dan Blocker's son. Now, David has less of the hoss genes in him. Yeah, there is some resemblance, especially around the eyes, I think. And his jawline's like Dad's, but smaller. David also differed from Dad because he favored the producer route. We first met Dan in Bonanza when he was in his early 30s, and at that same age, David was just starting out in his production career. First, with return engagement. Jump ahead to today and pretty much every genre is in there. From the romantic dramedy, Choose Me, to the Hannah Montana movie. His work as producer for Don King Only in America earned him an Emmy Award. And his most recent work came from acting in 2017's Ray Meets Helen. Danny Bonaducci and Count Dante John Michael Valentino Bonaducci. The hairstyles are like night and day, but the color's a perfect match. Same with the general face shape and eyes. It's just the nose that stands out as different, I think. Danny Bonaducci serenaded his way into our hearts with the Partridge family. Or at least he just stood around as everyone else sang. His son, born on February 14th, 2001, has one of the greatest names ever. <clears throat> Count Dante Jean-Michael Valentino Bonaducci. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. 
he's looking to build his own career in entertainment. But interestingly enough, he was kind of quiet when Danny had a big health scare in recent years. I couldn't walk, I couldn't keep my balance, I slurred really badly, I couldn't remember anything. That might be out of a preference for privacy more than anything else since the bigger social media presence definitely comes from his sister, the Countessa Isabella. She's an artist, but hey, this is about the sons. Otherwise, Dante's in his 20s, and looks like Dante is looking at music as his area of expertise. That picture shows he's been into the guitar since he was around 16, just a few years older than Danny was when he was getting his big break, and a few years after Danny's mom was splitting up from an abusive dad. I'm just glad the next generation isn't dealing with any of that BS. David Cassidy and Bo Cassidy Stylish brown waves, sharp features, bright eyes, and just being adorable. The apple didn't fall far from the tree with David and Bo. Now many of us know David Cassidy went from quintessential teen idol to having a checkered past, and his marriages were equally rocky. So dad's a musical actor and Bo's mom a songwriter. I'm pretty sure her name's Sue Schifrin. And by their musical powers combined, Bo couldn't help but be musically gifted. Not to mention all the other musically inclined family members, Uncle Sean, Grandpa Jack. Aside from that, he does have a few on-screen credits, the most recent being the 2016 TV film, Written By. He's just keeping it cool in his early 30s. At the same age, his dad before him was rounding the corner on divorce number two. But his fan club was also naming a star after David in the International Star Registry. Cause David's fan club was like a frickin' force of nature that could have had Beatles lovers feeling like casuals. Boy, when you step back and look at it, there really were so many stars that made the beautiful constellation of 70s TV. So whose kid do you think is most like dad? Well, get down in the comments section and tell us who. If you enjoyed our father-son video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the video circulate and we certainly appreciate it. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss a memory. But most importantly, from all of us here at Do You Remember, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.